Today on the Bass Channel, we're talking about the Zephyr from Arkham Sound. And before we get rolling too deep into this video, uh, I should let you know that Arkham Sound sent me this unit directly to test out, do this video, and show you the sounds, but we're still good friends with our friends over at Zounds. So if there's anything else that you need to pick up, whether it be strings, picks, amps, pedals, etc., unfortunately they don't carry this product, but anything else that you might need, our affiliate link is down below. It costs you nothing extra, it just gives us a little bit of a percentage for sending you that direction. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, as you may or may not have noticed over the last couple months, I've been getting tremendously into rat gear. It's something that I didn't really pay attention to throughout my 20s, I was more of an individual stomp box kind of person, but now that I've experienced the magic of rack equipment, I don't know if I'm ever gonna go back. Just for my particular use in a studio setting, it's extremely convenient and I don't know how I've gotten this far without it. With that being said, the Zephyr is the one U space rack version of the Oracle preamp that we looked at uh, a couple years ago, 2021, I believe. As you may or may not remember, if you haven't seen that video, uh, it was a single tube, single 12AX7 tube preamp in more or less a pedal board format with all of the EQ and other things available. So for all intents and purposes, the Zephyr sounds just about identical to the Oracle, but it's really cool for me that I get to have that tone now, especially in the rack housing, because Chuck kept the pedal board version. Uh, we did use it in our big gigantic bass preamp shootout, it's Chuck's, I gave it back to him, so now I have one. I can set it in with my rack with all my other gear and we can regularly use it to reamp other pedals. You'll see it again in the future here very soon, but uh, just use it around the studio and it's awesome. And of course, if you haven't seen the Oracle video and you know nothing about Arkham Sound or the Oracle or the Zephyr, what is it? Well, like I said, it is a single 12AX7 tube preamp, in this case in a 1U rack housing, that kind of evokes that vintage Ampeg. I think unofficially it's kind of the B15 type of tone stack vibe. Um, we're gonna get into the tone stack and some of the intricate idiosyncrasies of this particular tone stack in a moment. But for now, it's a tube preamp with bass, treble, gain, there's some switches that we're gonna get into, but that is this product in a nutshell. So let's just go over what Arkham themselves have to say about the controls on board. The gain, treble, and bass controls use a James tone stack to provide a wide adjustment range with minimal interaction. The range control sweeps the tone stack's midpoint anywhere between 150 hertz to one kilohertz. Now again, I know that might sound a little confusing. We're gonna touch on that in more detail in just a moment, but let's continue running down the knobs. The high switch adds a bright cap to the circuit to open up the high frequency just a little bit, while the mid switch gives a plus three decibel boost at 150 hertz. The low switch gives you a plus six decibel boost at 80 hertz. The HPF or high pass filter switch is a passive filter giving you minus six decibels per octave set at 100 hertz. The mute switch of course is sweet silence at the flick of a switch. And the separate master volume for the preamp out and balanced out lets you dial in some grit and adjust stage volume to the board.
Okay, so if you're curious about the James Tone stack, uh, when you go to the Arkham website, there is a link that takes you to a whole separate page giving you the rundown on what the James Tone stack is. So to avoid any confusion, I'm just gonna let you know exactly what they say from the website with some visuals along the way. Despite its simple two-knob form, the James Tone Stack offers several advantages over other tone circuits. One is a nearly flat response when bass and treble are set at 12 o'clock. In this plot, sweeping both controls, you can see the wide adjustment range and limited interaction of treble and bass. Like any passive EQ, these controls simply decrease the amount of attenuation in a given frequency range, providing an apparent boost. Left plot is treble knob at 75% or 3 o'clock, right plot is bass knob at the same setting. Note that this is a shelving style EQ where the midpoint remains fairly fairly steady around negative 22 dB. In Ampeg's version, that midpoint is about 300 Hz. Here are the treble and bass cuts, both at around 25% or 9 o'clock. Look what happens when you boost both bass and treble, or conversely when you cut them. This ability to scoop or boost the midrange is another great advantage of the James. These are gentle plus or minus 25% settings. Ampeg's preamp stages have a good amount of clean gain, allowing you to recover gain lost to the tone stack. With this in mind, a dedicated mid control is largely superfluous. Simply shape your mids by setting treble and bass as shown above and readjust your volume. The range control featured in the Zephyr allows you to sweep a boost or scoop throughout the entire mid-range. Left plot shows the extremes of cut and boost, where the right plot shows the extreme at either end of the range control. Features in Arkham preamps such as low, mid, and high switches help emphasize and focus the boosts already available in the tone stack. They're slightly different than those used by Ampeg. Additional narrow booster cuts require active circuitry as seen in Ampeg's V4 and SVT amplifiers. Okay, I don't know about you, but that was a lot of pretty complex information, but it breaks it down relatively simple to understand what's going on, and it was pretty easy for me to dial it in. I actually understood it better this time around doing the Zephyr than I did when we were doing the Oracle. I had a basic understanding a couple years ago with the Oracle, but now it seems to really lock into my brain, and it makes sense. So all that's really left to say is how I feel about it. Uh, I, I dig it. I think it sounds really good. It's got a great vintage kind of character to it. Um, you can dial in the gain to get that little bit of grit if you need it. I personally like it a little more on the clean side. I'm not a big fan, personally, again, just my own opinion, of how tubes break up, unless they have a little help beforehand. found that in base applications to push a tube into submission, the low end hits it first because they're bigger, stronger waves, and then it just makes it a little too bass heavy in the distortion for me. Or a little bit too, I guess, for lack of a better word, kind of farty. Um, I don't like the way the lower frequencies break up, so I like more either something that's gonna have kind of a crossover where I can only distort the mids and or highs and leave the bass relatively clean or put some kind of an EQ or Tube Screamer type of thing in front of it where it shapes it a little more to make those mid-range frequencies a little bit stronger so they distort first before the low end. That's just me.
If you like the way tubes break up, I think this does it just as well as I've heard anything else do it, especially the Ampeg SVT and similar type of things, the Orange Terror Base, etc., etc. I know that the Orange Terror Base is using 12AX7s, I'm pretty sure the Ampeg is too, but I'm not 100% sure on what type of tube that's using. Either way, this has one 12AX7 tube in it. It breaks up like any other 12AX7 tube that you may have heard. And I found that it sounds really good with kind of Gibson style basses. You know that I'm a big fan of Gibson basses, like this SG bass right there. I've got another one in the shop, but that kind of vintage flat wound mudbucker huge sound when you roll the bass off and then you hit the mid switch to give it that 150 hertz character. It just has a really sweet vintage kind of vibe. I'm really excited to get my other SG bass back with tapes on it and run that with the bass cut, the mids up, and just see what kind of cool thumpy tone I can get. <laughs> That is the long information and short opinion on the Zephyr from Arkham. Again, if you like this type of tone and you're after this type of tone, I think this is a pretty easy way to get that type of tone, again, without taking up too much space. If you're not a rack guy, you can go for the Oracle and get the pedal board version. It's got the tube in it as well. And of course, if you want this as an all-in-one solution to drive a speaker and take to the gig, you can get the Beast, which is basically this attached to a 1200 watt power amp. So you can just have this tone through a 15 or a 210 or a 410 or a 112 or whatever it is that you want to drive and you're good to go. So again, thank you all very much for watching. Um, if you like what we do here and you want to support us, like I said, you can check out that Zounds affiliate link or you can support us directly by becoming a YouTube channel member. It's five bucks a month, so it's about the equivalent of buying us one cup of coffee every month. So if you like what we do here and you want to support us that way, uh, we would very much welcome that support. If not, these videos are always going to be here available for everyone else to watch whenever you want to, but the member stuff is just a little extra fun stuff that we have cooked up that are not these. So that is the long-winded, I didn't script it out version of saying that members videos are exclusive to members. I think that's just about all I have to say. Again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, be safe and we we will see you next time.